Good morning to everyone. We are open hearing number 13 of the 183 regular session of the uh, that is called human rights situation of migrants and their families in the Dominican Republic. This hearing has been requested by a series of civil society organizations. I am Julissa Mantilla Falcon, president of the commission, and I'm joined by the second vice president and country reporter, Margaret May Macaulay, Commissioner Estuardo Ralon, who is the reporter for Haiti, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. We are here also with Soledad Garcia Munoz, Redesca reporter. I would like to greet the delegation of the state civil society organizations and Mr. Alberto Brunori, who is the uh, UN representative for Central America. We are going to start with 20 minutes for the civil society, then the state. Mr. Brunori will speak for seven minutes and the commission for 20 minutes. And then we will have a second round for 10 minutes for the state and the civil society. We have a digital tool to um, measure time. And we have bilingual interpretation and captions. These hearings are uh, broadcasted and the recorded will be uploaded to the um, commission's channel in YouTube. We are going to start with the participation of the civil society for 20 minutes. Thank you. Good morning, Madam President, and members of the distinguished Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. To the representatives of diplomatic organizations, the honorable members of the Dominican Republic state, colleagues of the civil society, and persons who are following the hearing from their communities. Thank you. My name is Manuel Dandre, and I'm here today in this table with Noemi Mendes and young leaders of the communities Wish Nayote, Kendri Paulina, Samuel Elida, Wilson Jan, and Paulina Solano, who will make the oral presentation. Also, in Barahona, Mr. Enesia is connected. We will present before the Distinguished Commission in this oral presentation a summary of the report of the civil society regarding the situation of human rights of pers migrants, persons, and their families in the Dominican Republic. I will give the floor to my colleague, Joseph. Regarding the text, the situation of stateless persons that was published in August, 2020, a new state administration is uh, led by Mr. Abidaner. Current government has inherited the desnaturalization by ruling 168, the implementation of law 164.14, the continuity of the implementation of the national plan for the regularization of foreigners, and the crisis left by the COVID pandemic in the country. After a long time, civil society organizations working with migrant persons and Dominicans of Haitian descent have requested in systematic way to Dominican authorities to restore communications regarding human rights situations of Dominicans of Haitian descent and their relatives, in particular to discuss between the civil society and the authorities, which took place in 2016 and 2018 with the uh, aid of the commission. We are part of different human rights uh, organizations that look for a better management of relations between civil society and the new government and aspire to have a solid dialogue, respectful in order to work with human rights defenders, civil society organizations, and community groups. Letters, press releases, requests for meetings, visits to authorities, having part of the strategies to get closer. But since its beginning, the new authorities have ignored the um, few progresses made, implementing a series of measures that make the situation more serious 
for Dominicans of Haitian descent. In eight years, what has happened to Dominicans that have been the victims of this ruling? According to the National Migration Council, 35 persons that have been registered in the National Registry have not been able to uh, re recover their identity documents. They still um, use the um, birth uh, registration victims of the Nas National uh, Constitutional Court and victims that have been identified in a, uh, an audit in 2015. And this uh, registration, the transfer of this registration are aimed at excluding the victims of the National Registry in the Republican Dominic, the Dominican Republic. These segregation policies is of great concern as we believe these will allow them to um, prevent other Dominicans from having their documentation. These Dominicans are entitled to their citizenship, but they are not considered as Dominican citizenships and they are not uh, foreigners with a regular situation in the country. This does not correspond to the interest of the citizenship, but practices to obstacle services. The birth certificates are a huge uh, difficulty for uh, Dominicans of Haitian descent, even to persons with uh, documentation restored. It is very hard to obtain for birth certificate, renew documentations, among other processes that should be e that are easier for other Dominicans. The process the families have to go through cause intergenerational conflict among relatives as they cannot access the proper documentation. Poverty is a key factor that hinders proper certifications and policies have resulted insufficient and unfortunately authorities are not sensible to the magnitude of this reality. It is necessary to underscore that our struggle does not distinguish between Dominicans and Dominicans of diverse origins. The response to access civil registry without discrimination includes everyone. The plan for the regularization of foreigners. According to official statistics, thousands of Dominicans were able to be um, affected by law 169 are still waiting for their citizenship to be authorized to this group they were given a um, category of migrants that should be renewed periodically. And they have an ID that does not allow them to vote or be benefited by uh, social programs. Many persons have been able to obtain the citizenship, but they have not received documentation to credit their uh, nationalization. Law 169-14 makes no difference between documents granted to Dominicans that were benefited by Law 169 from documents granted to migrants. ID for migrants given to this group have already expired without competent authorities informing about mechanisms for the renewal of these documentation in order to be given naturalizations. The police officers already lack the department to review naturalization for persons affected by law 169. These persons have not received uh, information or attention for more than a year 
regarding the follow-up of their cases. We express our concern for the denial of renovation services, which puts at risk thousands of young Dominicans who already have documentation according to law. They have dreams, projects, and they contribute for the development of their communities. The Dominicans descent, uh, of uh, migrant descent living in urban and rural areas do not feel safe. They are usually detained by migration officers and they risk being uh, deported from their country. The situation has worsened. These documents have expired because we lack the necessary channels, although there is a mechanism to do so. Authorities have not investigated human rights violations against migrants and Dominicans of Haitian descent. It is important to highlight the concern of the civil society regarding the, uh, necess the necessity to strengthen this situation. The current administration uses a series of practices that violate national legislation, bilateral agreements and international agreements to the detriment of um, human rights for migrants. Many of these issues have been dealt with in hearings such as the one that took place yesterday. And regarding national plans for the regularization of foreigners in 2015, and more than 180,000 requests were um, analyzed, but there is no information about these proceedings damaging, especially migrants of Haitian descent. There are human rights violations in spite of the regional column to stop the deportation of Haitian migrants, taking into account the current situation, but um, thousands of detentions have been produced without informing their relatives. The workers who were in the sugar industry, in the private uh, sector and the National Sugar Council, in spite of the promises, are not able to uh, receive their pension after years of working in the sugar industry because they do not have an ID or residency in the country. Among the violations committed in the last quarter in 2021, we could highlight limitation to access health services the order of um, deportation of pregnant women, migrants, which has been executed massively, which constitutes a, an act of discrimination against women. This is a gynecologic uh, discrimination and violence. Women have been detained inside uh, within hospitals while they were seeking for medical attentions. More than 300 civil society organizations have rejected this persecution. And we request, we urge the government to stop violence against women and girls, the deportations of undocumented uh, Dominicans and migrants and different violations that uh, hin that put at risk children and adolescents. The practice of deporting uh, Haitian children and adolescents is something we recognize as well. Going through the experience is something with this experience that of denial of documents is something terrible this prevents persons to uh, overcome situations of crisis prevent them to participate in public life with equality and vindicate and revindicate our rights access to documents is related to social political and economic rights the lack of documents excludes persons from formal uh, work and forcing them to uh, labor exploitation and does not enable them to participate or receive social services. We need to recall that persons subject to this naturalization or denial 
of citizenship who do not have access to the documents cannot work within formal uh, labor sectors. Access credit in banks, access programs for, uh, for emergency subsidies, access higher education institutions, sign contracts to purchase and the COVID-19 pandemic shows that citizenship is more than a paper. It means identity, family, community, freedom. We highlight the support of the Romanian um, community, the um, doctors, organizations, and the solidarity with our cause had been has been widespread the society is fighting to achieve social justice but our authorities insists on perpetrating a past of exclusion after descendants young people in the country in america have been working in an articulated way in order to fight for uh, our rights, although the lack of documentation made us miss the opportunity to work, progress, and study. We have the historic opportunity of representing uh, young people like ourselves. And we are here today in a space where um, citizens have the opportunity to be heard, to request our government to leave institutionalized discrimination behind. We are here today to tell our authorities that young people looking for our, uh, fighting for our generation want to contribute to a society that is more just and equal in the Dominican Republic. We request the Dominican state through the Honorable Commission the following, the Dominican state state to implement the framework law following current legislation for all those which includes regimes of consequences for all those deliberately commit the crime of discrimination that the right of affected dominican nationality be recognized for all persons born before january 26 2010 without any restriction in application of article 18 of constitution of 2010, that ruling 168 of the Dominican Constitutional Court does not continue to produce effects on persons born in Dominican territory before January 26, 2010. And consequently, that the state stop implementing discriminatory policies that contravene its own constitution based on this, that the Dominican state guarantees legal security to effectively recover the Dominican nationality to the recipients of law 169 14, decree 250, decree 262, and decree 297, that the Dominican state adopt the law that creates the foreign birth registry book in the terms approved by uh, Article 55 of 2010 Constitution adopted the legislation that creates this registration modality. Require the Dominican state the application of international human rights standards in cases of expulsion, of deportation, or of migrants, especially of Haitian origin. Establish regimes of consequences for migratory agents who act outside the guidelines that protect their actions and due process in matters of set interdictions and migratory detentions for the purpose of deporting foreigners. Urge the Dominican state to take pertinent measures in order to stop the massive deportations of Cations and their families and abstaining Dominicans of Haitian descent whether they are documented or not. In particular, desist from the expulsion of persons who cannot be deported according to its own legislation, pregnant migrant women 
elderly, as well as migrant children and adolescents, train military police officers uh, on human rights, so they respect fundamental rights of the population of migrant workers when they are subject of procedures under their authorities. Eliminate practices in the DGM in relation to administrative and bureaucratic procedures for the renewal of migratory or work permits and reducing the high costs for these services, including residences and work permits. That the plan for the regularization of foreigners be brought to a successful conclusion, seeking to create sustainable channels to promote cross-border migration. They say instrument, mechanism, programs with affirmative actions that allow Dominicans affected by digitalization or statelessness to have equal access to public services without discrimination, subsidies, assistance programs, sources of credit, measures, and other resources to promote economic resilience to the people and communities, to put into effect a um, work table between the civil society organizations Unfortunately, we have a connectivity issue and the time of civil society has expired, so they could end their request on the second part. I would like to give the floor to the state for 20 minutes. Thank you, Madam President. Can you hear me? Okay. First of all, I would like to greet all of you and the commissioners present today, as well as the staff of the Inter-American Commission, also, I would like to greet Alberto Brunotti from the United Nations and the distinguished representatives of civil society organizations, as well as the representatives of the institutions of the government that are members of the Human Rights Commission that is headed today by Minister Ruben Salier and Director Neira Paulino. Distinguished commissioners, the state of Dominican Republic as an institution that wants to guarantee and protect the human rights of peoples living in the territory of the Dominican Republic. Thanks the opportunity to participate in this thematic hearing within this period of sessions of the commission. We are here to address the request of NGOs who requested this hearing. They are saying that in our country there are human rights violations against Afro-descendants and migrants. These organizations indicate that in the country there are human rights violations that affect specific groups of migrants and their families, women, children, and older persons, peasants, among other groups. Now we will present the reports of the state regarding each of these aspects. Taking into consideration the arguments are replied to the um, information presented by the people who requested this hearing regarding the nationality issues that lead to a statelessness, especially for people who are born in this country and are the children of migrants. The state of Dominican Republic adopted law 169 slash 14 in 2014 to respond to the ruling 168 slash 13 of the Constitutional Court population was divided in two groups. The first group, group A, that includes descendants of foreigners who have a legal status, who were included in the Dominican Republic registry. According to law 169, according to this first classification, they were recognized as Dominican citizens. And the electoral um, board order the granting of their ID cards as Dominican citizens. And for that, there was an audit conducted in the National Registry, and this was conducted across the country. And this led to 60,000 people from different nationalities. And for these people, 24,000 children of foreigner foreigner parents who were in an irregular situation 
were given citizenship. And 27,000 records of irregular status people. They had, these people only have a card. They have temporary residence cards or a passport and have no document. And they receive these specific documents. Also, the children of parents under an irregular situation receive an ID card, even though they shouldn't have received that card. And their records are included in those transfers records that I mentioned before. Article 3 of Law 169 indicates the cases of exception for obtaining the Dominican nationality. And any records that have fake information or identity um, fraud, they will be punished by these crimes. And also there are several cases in which parents presented a foreign passport. However, investigations indicated that these were Dominicans who had another nationality and their records were not included. And then there were other records that have a different status. Um, over 400 uh, were transferred, others were audited and others 200 were not rejected. These included people who have died or whose records have been destroyed. Taking into consideration the proceedings that I described before, taking into consideration enforcement of law 169, around 50,000 people and their descendants were considered Dominican citizens. According to group B, there are foreigner descendants in an irregular situation that have no record in the national registry, but who have lived in Dominican Republic throughout their life and have no link to other countries. The law established a 90 day deadline to register themselves as foreigners and to have the opportunity to have an special process to obtain nationality within two years. This was conducted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Police. The institution received the documentation by these people and presented information to assess whether it would be granted or rejected, taking into consideration the criteria that I mentioned before. After that, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Police sent around 7,000 files during this process, and these Files are included in the books. And after two years, these 7,000 people uh, were in a condition to obtain their ID card and then their uh, citizenship. I would like to talk about the arbitrary detention of women, permanent women. After the earthquakes of 2010 and 2019, Haiti have a serious humanitarian crisis and then this worsened the massive inflow of Haitian migrants to Dominican Republic. This includes pregnant women that come to our country to receive medical attention. This crisis reached uh, its mm, most uh, difficult time after the murder of the president of Haiti in July last year. In order to understand the size of the situation I'm talking about. In 2018, 14,000 um, births from Haitian mothers were recorded in public hospitals in Dominican Republic. And in 2020, this figure almost doubled. And then the following year, it increased a lot. And in 20, 21, there were over 35,000 pregnant, uh, pregnancies and births. So this means that the 23% of births were from Haitian mothers in 2019, and it accounts for 30% in 2022. 
figures show that the massive use of health services in Dominican Republic by migrant pregnant women in a regular status is a recent issue and is consistent with the humanitarian crisis in Haiti. This uh, phenomenon is related also to the regular migration of Haitian workers pregnant women that come to Dominican Republic to receive health services in our country uh, travel irregularly to our country using human trafficking networks. This situation together with other worrying situations led the Immigration Council in an extraordinary meeting held in September 21, order the National Directorate of Migration to implement new measures to control migration. And all these measures were consistent with national legislation. According to the Office of Migration Control between November 2021 until January 2022, less than 1% of foreigners who were repatriated include pregnant women. Finally, the state is not conducting massive deportations of pregnant women. When there are specific cases, the protocol of the Office of Migration prevents the deportation of women who are in delivery. Repatriation only occurs when that is a safe situation for the mother and for the baby. And for that, we have the support of the National Children's Office. That is the agency that protects the rights of minors taking into consideration the best interest of children. The Dominican state is sensitive to the situation of mothers who do not receive basic services in their country. However, we understand that there is a situation of violence and mobility, according to which Haitians are looking for services in other countries. And the situation of Haitians is a situation of the international community, since the situation of Haiti is under the monitoring of the Council of the United Nations since 2004. Within this context, the Dominican government has reinforced measures to comply with migration legislation of the country and to control the excessive demand of health services in public hospitals in our country. Finally, to illustrate the size of this situation, in 2019, health services provided to Haitian citizens account for um, over 1 million services. This included consultation, surgeries, uh, deliveries, C-sections, and these account for an expenses for of over 4 billion Dominican pesos. That means over $80 million of expenses. According to data from the National Care Service of the country, 24,000 deliveries and over 11 C-sections were conducted in our country. And the cost is of almost 300, um, 300 million of Dominican pesos or $4 million. Now I would like to talk about the regular situation of migrant workers because the NGOs said that these people have some temporary documents. The Dominican state is not conducting massive deportations or arbitrary detentions. This is consistent with the figures of our offices. Guaranteeing the rights of migrants is a commitment of the Dominican state. That's why we have issued several regulations, including decree 327 decree that regulates the situation of migrant workers in Dominican Republic to establish the terms and the conditions for migrants taken into consideration law 
295 that is the general law on migration also we have law 169 that established a special regime for uh people who were born in the national territory but are from foreign descent both laws are a way in which the executive and the legislative branches have tried to protect rights um, according to what has been established by ruling 168. The state of Dominican Republic is called up in finding a solution of these people who are in an irregular status within the national records, but they have citizenship. Um, after exhausting all the corresponding procedures, we issued decree 160 from July 2020 and 750 people were given nationality after the ruling that I mentioned before from the Constitutional Court. In 2021, this procedure was continued and another 50 people received their nationality. Now I would like to talk about the alleged denial of pensions and the risk of deportation of older persons who are migrants. According to the petitioners, these people contributed to the labor force of the country for many decades. Taking into consideration the commitment of the Dominican Republic Constitution establishes that the state is responsible for taking care of people, respecting their dignity and guaranteeing access to income within a framework of individual framework and social justice, taking into consideration the well being of everyone. According to Article 57, the protection of older persons is guaranteed through different social institutions, promoting their integration into community life. Article 60 also guarantees access to social justice. The state recognizes the historic debt with migrants who did a dignified work in sugar plantations, the so-called cañeros. Therefore, there is a list of 1,600 sugar workers and 700 people have received their pensions. And this shows that we are interested in revendicating the rights of these people. In spite of the barriers uh, we faced, and since only 200 people, or 200 people of all those individuals comply with the legislation, we made an effort to give these benefits to 269 people. And after that, 484 people were able to complete their documentation and they were benefited with the pension. According to decree 819 from 2021, it's important to take into consideration that the granting of pensions to sugar workers has been a state policy after decree 245 and 266 from 2012. The state of Dominican Republic has shown its interest in improving the situation of sugar workers. And we will continue with this process to grant patients to all those who have documentation and have the evidence to prove their work. This policy was created after several complaints of, um, regarding false information and false documents. And the state has presented several complaints about those people who have participated in false informations, information crime. Now I would like to talk about access to health during the context of the pandemic. Uh, the right to health is an economic, social, cultural, and environmental right. And this right implies that there should be affirmative actions on the side of the state. Complying with this right is very important. It is established in the constitution. However, the state had to take actions uh, to control the excessive demand of health services in our country. 
recognizing the challenges created by the pandemic, the government ordered the vaccination of foreigners in our country. And our vaccination plan has benefited all people in Dominican Republic, regardless of their nationality and migration status. The state of Dominican Republic established a strategy to promote vaccination for migrants and undocumented persons. And this was coordinated by the Ministry of Health and the High Commissioner uh, for Refugees and UNICEF. And we also have a contribution from some NGOs, uh, including one NGO that is here today. This plan affected over 7,000 people. We have different strategies and actions in order to provide vaccination to migrant population. And we have several guidelines. We have a training workshop in order to promote vaccination, a special day for vaccination for migrants. This was conducted across the country. The Dominican constitution guarantees the right to health of every person, regardless of their nationality or their legal residence or status in the territory. But there, however, there are some restrictions in the access to these rights. According to these offices, only those people with legal residence or citizens should have access to some of these rights. Madam President, and since we don't have time, we will present other topics later. I will now give the floor to Mr. Brunoli. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the commissioners, the ad hoc executive secretary, the distinguished delegation of the state, the petitioners, civil society organizations. Thank you for inviting the office of the UN High Commissioner. As representative for Central America, uh, Dominican Republic, and the English Caribbean, I am here to present oral uh, information without being under oath regarding human rights situations of the immigrants and their relatives. Miss uh comments should be understood as a waiver regarding the privileges and immunities of the un the system the inter-american system for protection and universal system of the un have been consistent in establishing a series of minimum criteria that the states should uh, implement to protect and guarantee human rights of migrants based on the principles of non-discrimination, higher interest of the childhood and family unity, among others. As the representative of the delegation of the state said, the Dominican Republic and other re states in the region face many challenges to provide a human rights approach response to migrants in a complex situation. Um, Haitian migration is 50, accounts for 52 percent according to the Office for Migration, which requires special attention to the need to protect the situation of vulnerability in which these persons are. We acknowledge the plan as uh, defined by the ambassador. Although Dominican Republic has uh, public policies and legislation to eradicate a violation against uh, women in 2021, some facts are known regarding the deportation of um, Haitian women or women of Haitian descent. According to our information, and the dozens of pregnant women and lactating women have been detained or deported while they received attention in a hospital in different regions of the country, taking into account 
the position uh, expressed by the state in that regard. The access to migrant has been restricted uh, migrants in uh, not regular situation, even women uh, with a six month pregnancy with the goal of guaranteeing access to uh, health, this UN system in the country and the commission have issued two public releases, press releases expressing their concern to the integrity or, or physical integrity of the pregnant women seeking medical attention uh, who were deported without any humanitarian consideration and reminded the state standards uh, prohibiting the deportation of pregnant women, elderly children and adolescents. In February 2022, the Committee for the Elimination of Violence Against Women recommended the state to uh, suspend deportation of pregnant women or uh, Haitian uh, women to guarantee the protection uh, against violence and gender discrimination. And also that the state should grant permanent residency to Haitian women whose children were born and raised in the country in compliance with international standards. The special reporter on human rights of migrants a special rapporteur on the right to health and a special rapporteur on the uh, rights of women have expressed their concern as the situation of special vulnerability of women that who were deported was not taken into account and the legal duty of the country to provide medical attention to migrants who need a special protection as it is established in uh, guidelines for the protection of human rights of migrants in a situation of vulnerability it is important for all migrants regardless of their migration status can access essential services without fearing being deported or detained as a result of the migrating situation. I want to conclude by saying by the guiding principles recommended in terms of um, human rights, recognize the international uh, duties to guarantee that the measures implemented in connection with lactated or pregnant women include access to uh, prenatal uh, attention and medical attention. Thank you, Mr. Brunori. The presence of the UN is very important within this um, framework for the integration of the international and regional framework. So we will now start with the participation of the Inter-American Commission. I will ask Second Vice President and Country Rapporteur Margaret May Macaulay, who is also the Rapporteur for Afro Descendants, whether she has any questions. Um, good morning, Madam President. Good morning to the representatives of the state. Good morning to civil society, all members who are here. And good morning to the United Nations representative, who is a long and standing friend and participant in our proceedings. Um, good morning to my colleagues and good morning to all officers of the, the um, Commission Secretariat and all those who are online and listening to this public hearing. Um, Madam President, before I, I pose any questions, I do want to just make a short statement that since the years uh, between 2007 and um, 2012, um, I was acquainted with the problems of Haitians and Haitians uh, um, who were born in, in the Republic of Dominica, Dominican Republic, and who have resided there for all their lives who were being subjected to exclusion um, as uh, would entitle them in other countries to citizenship. 
and um, permanent residents and who were being deported. This was why I was a judge of the Inter-American Court. And we, we had cases which we had to deal with there at, at that time. And then of course, since I've been in the Inter-American Commission from 2016 up to this date, I was also a member of the working group on the implementation of human rights policies um, um, in the Dominican Republic, and um, which was set up by both the commission and the um, state um, in order to be a follow-up of the commission's decision to when we did, had decided to include the state in chapter 4B of the 2016 annual report. And so we said we had this working group and we had several meetings, both in the Secretariat in Washington and in the Dominican Republic. And, and these meetings culminated in the state um, agreed to meet four commitments, which we eventually held that they had met. And, but in the course of the discussions, the issue of the mechanism, for instance, which had been set up was fully discussed. And there was the problem highlighted of all um, um, Haitians of Dominican birth who needed to know of the mechanism and who also needed those who had great fear to encounter any state agency within the DR, who, um, that they, they, some process would evolve to ensure that everyone heard of the mechanism and that those who were fearful of state encounters would, they would be worked with so that they would feel comfortable to approach the states um, to ensure that they fell within the operation of the mechanism. Now, I, I, I must admit that I haven't had clear, uh, um, a clear idea of what was done in those circumstances because we met some of Haitians of Dominican birth in really difficult uh, areas which were so difficult to access that one we wondered whether we would reach the, this part or whether we would be able to get back from them. Um, but we met them, lots of them young persons, some who had had the benefit to go to university uh, or technical colleges and, and get training, but who had been uh, completely unemployed because they did not have the necessary documentation to show nationality. And this situation was ripe then, and we thought it would have been sorted out. And we now hear again, and we have continued to hear again because we, we put out a press release late last year about it, that the situation really has not been sorted out. And the, what the commission and the court had, had come to the conclusion that the situation with Haitians in Dominican Republic, those who were born with it, or those who were there through irregular entry and so on, were suffering the situation that we're suffering because of institutional and structural systematic discrimination. And that this had to be dealt with, of course, uh, within the, uh, the, um, the in international and inter-American systems of human rights. And I am saddened that we are here today to deal with this all over again. And so I wish to ask um, the state to provide pres uh, the present time, the exact number of stateless, stateless persons they have in the Dominican Republic, especially those of um, Haitian 
uh, um, who are Haitians, but were born in Dominica uh, Republic. And those who are pregnant, to disaggregate the information, but those who are pregnant, those who attended school in, Domin in Dominican Republic were, were lucky to get into university and receive training, um, degrees in university or training in technical uh, college facilities. And those who are, um, belong to the LGBTI community, those who are elderly and what their status is and so on and so forth. Because we need the specific uh, and disaggregated uh, uh, um, statistics, statistics. And also, if the, the states can also supply us with the information as to how many persons of Dominican birth, of Haitian origin, were granted Dominican nationality through receiving their ident identification cards and birth registration person identification cards and so on in the years 2020 and 2021 so that we can differentiate what happened in those two years. Um, and if the state can also tell us in the clearest terms whether they envisage a reactivation of the mechanism to ensure a large proportion of the Haitian of Dominican births who are there presently is, all have information about the mechanism, which we hope they will re regenerate uh, um, for use of these peoples. And, and with that, I am hoping that we might be able to, to come to some humanitarian and, and acceptable conclusion. And finally, I ask, I venture to ask, make a request that the commission, that the state invite the commission for another visit, as we did when we were discussing and meeting and trying to resolve this, this really sad and, and troubling issue, um, to monitor the situation in situ, in local, where we can meet the state officials again, civil societies, and go to these inaccessible areas to meet actual victims of uh, um, denial uh, of, of nationality and serious vulnerabilities. Thank you. Eh, muchas gracias, Comisionada. Eh, voy a dar la palabra a mis otros Thank colegas. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. We'll now give the floor to my other colleagues. We have 11 minutes. I will now give the floor to First Vice President, Commissioner Rolón. Thank you, Madam President, to my colleagues, civil society, representatives of the state, and especially the UN representative, Mr. Brunoli. I would like to briefly say that I am the country reporter for Haiti. And yesterday we had a hearing about the regional situation regarding migrants and human mobility in Haiti. And there were a series of uh, demands about uh, facts that occur in different countries. And at one point, they mentioned the tension, especially uh, of pregnant women in medical or health centers. I paid attention to what the state has said. And I would like to say that any information, although we have taken down notes, but any information you can share, especially to the rapporteurship I'm in charge of, could be very useful to gather information for us to work in a collaborative manner um, in this difficult situation. I have a question. 
although there are efforts and uh, norms, actions mentioned by the state, whether you have documented any incident, any accident in the application of the protocol, any isolated um, event in which there was an excessive use of force, any event the state is aware of, and whether any um, measures are being taken. Commissioner Bernal, please. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to thank all the participants in this hearing for giving us the opportunity to discuss such uh, complex issues. Thank you to the civil society and also the representatives of the state for being open to um, receive comments and uh, initiatives. Thank you to the UN representative. I would like to say that I appreciate the report on public policies that Ambassador has uh, presented, Ambassador Fiasha. I would like to ask three specific questions to the Ambassador. Uh, first, in any public policy or in the execu execution of public policies, there may be bureaucratic barriers or errors for example, during processes for the regularization of uh, each of the individuals. I would like to know whether in the Dominican Republic, if there are persons who believe that in these uh, processes, included in the policies mentioned by the ambassador, if any persons believe their rights have been violated, they can resort to the mechanisms established in the constitution in order for in order for their um, rights to be protected as well as for all persons of in human mobility situation in case their uh, rights are violated my second question is related to social rights i know that that even in my uh, country when i was a magistrate in the constitutional court I had to participate in discussions that were similar to these ones, but my question is whether Dominican Republic provides uh, humanitarian aid to migrants. One thing is to provide social services, but humanitarian aid um, for persons in situation of human mobility should receive. And I would like to know whether there are any public policies in that sense. And thirdly, migration and mobility is a regional problem. It is a structural problem. And in that sense, I would like to know, and I'm going to ask the representative of the state whether the country receives uh, financial or logistical um, aid from other OES um, members in order to develop structural solutions to the problems related to human mobility. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I would like to make some questions and some comments. First, I would like to recognize that the state is here. The Commission truly appreciates you being here today. And also the Commission wants to recall that is being working. We have a working group with the Dominican Republic and we continue to monitor the situation. Apart from the questions made, my made by my colleagues, I have some specific questions, especially regarding uh, my rapporteurship of rights of women, especially regarding discrimination. A woman who is in the Dominican Republic will suffer discrimination or violence, whether she is from the Dominican Republic or not. But when you have other conditions or other things that vulnerability is exacerbated or aggravated. So I would like to know uh, or ask you about obstetric violence. That's what civil society organizations talk about. It's not only about pregnant women, but also the treatment received by teen women living in Dominican Republic that have to 
receive services or health services in your country because any person who even is in a legal status can has can suffer obstetric violence we would like to know what's the situation of obstetric, obstetric violence for Haitian women living in your country we would like to know also the situation of girls because we have talking about children in general but i would like to know the situation of girls and their risk of human trafficking and sexual abuse. And another important aspect regarding statelessness and this extreme level of vulnerability is the message that is conveying. Gender stereotypes are always there, but when? Apart from that, because of nationality or regular status or statelessness, that situation is exacerbated, is aggravated. So I would like to know what prevention policies you have for human trafficking and what happens with the, in the case of girls and women from Haiti. And I would like to know if there is any procedure for the investigation and punishment of public officials that are involved in discrimination actions um, that discriminate migrants because of their origin or because of their regular status. And I also would like to recall that last year, the Inter-American Commission issued resolution 2021 protection of Haitians in human mobility. That includes in its title, the words Inter-American solidarity. And what we understand that this is a situation of international cooperation. And that's why I would like to ask the state and we would like to tell the state that we are at your disposal. Dominican Republic is addressing a specific situation in their country, but this is not limited to Dominican Republic. And we know that human mobility is not only about migration, but it's also about internal, internal displacement. And I also would like to thank civil society organizations for being here and for being so diverse today. And I would like to ask you a question. One of you said, Nationality is more than a paper, it's identity, it's family. I wanted to ask the last person who participated, and I don't know your name, because your presentation was cut. Um, I, you were a woman. Can you tell us the violations that you are suffering in your family, in your life, what you're going through right now? Go, coming and going, the problems with documentation will continue, but families are being created. And I would like to know the consequences on families. I would like to know what is happening in those specific situations. Before closing, I would like to give the floor to Soledad Garcia Munoz. You have one minute, Soledad. Thank you, Madam President. There are so many comments, so many questions, but because of time restrictions, I just want to recognize the efforts made by the Dominican Republic. We understand the difficulties and the challenges taking into consideration the available resources, but we know that the ESCRs uh, implies non-discrimination, the minimum core, and also we need international cooperation. So. It would be very interesting to know the efforts made by the Dominican Republic in order to promote international cooperation so that the international community collaborates or joins their efforts. And I would like to know about the situation of sugar workers. It is a situation that we are monitoring in our mandate, and we would like to receive more information in this regard, both from civil society and from the state. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, dear Soledad. Now I would like to give the floor to civil society for 10 minutes. Thank you. My name is Paulina Solano. One of the situations that most affects girls in my community is that for most of them, for most of my colleagues, they have no access to education. Mm, many of them drop out school because of 
their documentation or lack of documentation. They have several difficulties to access to access health services and many other things. And in my case, in the past, I couldn't study. I suffered a lot of bullying at school. That is really difficult for most of my girl colleagues, friends. They suffer a lot from bullying. Also the racial issue. Most people from my community suffer racism. They are excluded. Mm, this also happens in meetings and I could, how can I say this? Um, there are several situations in which we suffer. My mother is a migrant and she has suffered a lot because of the ruling. She has an expired ID card. And for us, it was very difficult to ask, access legal documents. They denied us that access. Every time my parents went to the office to provide statements and they always have excuses for them. And they always treated them in a discriminatory way. That affected us a lot. I have several witnesses many young people who decided to get married because they have no documentation. They ended their studies and they have no access to university because they have no documentation. They are suffering a lot and they want to contribute to society. To, they want to contribute to the Dominican Republic, but since they have no documentation, they cannot contribute. So what, what we want as Dominicans and as Dominicans from Haitian descent, we need to have a document that identifies us as people. Otherwise we are stateless. We want to have access to that documentation so we can also contribute something to the community. Um, I don't know. Yes, you can continue. Within the framework of the intervention of the state, we would like to reply to some of the considerations they made. The first, we are talking about the nationalization of nationals. And that means a serious issue. It's not about two groups. It's not only group A or B. There are other groups, for example, um, mixed couples, for example, when the mother is from Haitian origin and the father is from a Dominican. And that's a very, a group that is suffering several violations because the father cannot transfer the Dominican nationality to their children. And then there is another group that is a plan that have no access to the plan. This group can go to the state offices and have a record. They are given a document that is just a record, but they have no right. That document does not allow them to have access to an ID card or any other documents. With regard to group A, which was mentioned by the ambassador, that should have been the group that have more benefits because they have a record. He talks about the auditing and the transcriptions. The audit was not completed. There are some people who go to get their birth certificates and they are told that their processes is not in the audit. 
and the transition or this transfer is a legal type that does not exist for this group because it is included in articles 33 and 34 of law 59 of civil acts and that transition or transcription is only for the children of nationals that are born abroad. And as the law says, in order to access to Dominican citizenship, they need to trans have a transcript. And since there is no book in the Dominican legislation, there is a duplicity because there is the original act or certificate and the transcript. And that is a duplicity that was created by the authorities. And therefore, we need to request the nullity of the one of those certificates. And there are several deadlines according to law. And for that, we need official lawyers. And that means a lot of expenses and costs. Many people uh, who were requested or to um, annul one of these certificates, those deadlines were not changed. So that group, their nationality should have been granted according to law, but many are facing many issues because they have been requested to annul that birth certificate that is a duplicate. Then there is a second group, they receive a foreign birth rate. They were given temporary residence, but for only two years. And they receive a foreign certificate for one year. And the procedure was centralized in the city of Santo Domingo, when most people live in the rural areas and in Papeches. And according to the decrees for the nationalization, that were included in that same law and in law 169 slash 14 to obtain nationality. The first decree in June this year, it will be two years old. And the second decree in April this year will be one year old or will have been ineffective for one year. And up to date, none of the beneficiaries of those decrees have had access to nationality. None of them has the nationality. We have a statements from vice or deputy ministers from the interior and from police, and they are requesting the ordinary procedures of the nationalization law, but those requirements will not be, cannot be fulfilled by people. They are requesting the requirements of the original law, but not the criteria of law 169 and regarding migrants and the regularization plan we have this plan that granted migration categories to some foreigners who requested the temporary residence or work permits but for those proceedings, you have to pay the same expenses or the same costs as ordinary procedures. And most people cannot pay for that. It is a process that needs to be done in Santo Domingo through the online platform of the Office of Migration. And regardless of that, there are a group of people, of migrants, who try to apply for this national plan, but they never receive a reply in spite of what is established in Article 33 of the decree that established this national plan of regularization. The decree said that they have 45 days for a reply. And if there was a denial, the person that was the beneficiary should be notified with the explanation and the reasons why that person was being rejected sorry to interrupt you you are running out of time but all the information that you have you can send that information to the inter-american commission we need to keep uh, up with time because we have another hearing but don't worry don't worry 
because this is the first hearing, but we will have several hearings. This is an opportunity, but it will not be the last one. We will continue monitoring, we have the country rapporteur. So any information that you are not able to share, this doesn't mean that the, inform the commission will not receive that information. Don't, don't worry. The president and the chair is seeing everything. So don't worry. I would like to give the floor to the state for 20 minutes, for, for 10 minutes now. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to give the floor to the members of the commission members uh, that are in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs right now. And I would like to thank uh, the questions of Commissioner May Macaulay, Commissioner Rolón, Bernal, your questions and those questions of Ms. Oledad. And also I would like to thank the interventions of civil society for us. It's striking that Commissioner Macaulay is making reference that in 2022, we are in the same situation as in a, a decade ago. We need to admit that in recent years, we have made an effort within the institutional and political and legal framework to advance on solutions for many of these issues. And we need to recognize that even though these solutions are not perfect, and even though we, there are several obstacles and barriers, still the state is firm and committed to guaranteeing protection and to providing documentation to those people, to those people who should have access to that documentation according to our legislation. Um, Commissioner Rolón, I also would like to reply to you. Be sure that in the coming days, we will be providing a report to the commission with all the statistics and with all the figures we mentioned, not only regarding uh, public health and everything that has to do with the documentation regarding the electoral board or the Ministry of Justice, or because we were not able to provide information regarding the levels of education of foreign uh, population, also information regarding the situation of human rights defenders, among other groups. Now I would like to give the floor to Director Pauline, but before that, I wanted to reply to some of the things mentioned by Ms. Noemi. I believe that the variety of opportunities and the Diverse groups that are facing issues are multiple. We have different groups. The special law of 2014 address a part of that population, but the law established some mechanisms and some deadlines. Those deadlines were extended because we did not receive the expected number of people and we achieve or we uh managed to have a certain number of people who were recorded or who applied and the government had a program to receive records for migrants and foreigners for several years but um any country no country can have a constant policy of migration or migrant regularization that doesn't mean that in the future we can have a different program as it ha has happened in other countries, but we cannot have a constant program for migrants. Also, we will send to the Commission and to civil society organizations the last report prepared by the electoral board regarding the uh, current situation of each of these groups. We believe that this is a good opportunity to establish a special coordination office. So because they are mentioned in several cases that have no reply or that are having some difficulties or issues, um, the Office of Migration or any of our agencies, maybe we can channel these requests to these agencies. I don't want to take up all the time, so I would like to give the floor to the Director of Human Rights of my country. 
Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, members of the Commission, for giving me the opportunity of uh, responding some of the questions. I'm Neida Paulino, Human Rights Director in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and I'm here today with representatives from the Interinstitutional uh, Council of the Dominican Republic, the Electoral Board, the National Council for Children and Adolescents, the General Directorate for Migration, the Ministry of Public Health, the Ministry of Education, the uh, uh, General Attorney's Office, and the Vice President of the Commission. Before giving the floor to some of the members, I would like to make reference, first of all, to the question asked by Commissioner Estuardo regarding the excessive use of force in processes of deportation. The country, for many years, manages the concept through the use of force through the different training to the members of the armed forces and the national police in the different training institutes of these uh, offices. The members of the National Dictatorate of Migration receive specialized information about how to carry out deportations. We've been careful in carrying out protocols in line with international standards regarding human rights protection, including the use of women within um, process of deportation, that is to say, female officers that can search and uh, participate in the case of migrant women in order to respect that process. If there are specific demands in connection with uh, the excessive use of source use of force, there are different uh, sources, channels um, provided by the country, such as the General's, uh, General Attorney's Office, and in uh, some other um, events um, where the police participates, these channels are open to carry out an investigation by the Directorate of the Police Department. And we are open to receive any cases, any specific cases in order to investigate them. I also wanted to say something in connection with violence against women and obstetric um, violence, what President Mandia mentioned. We have just presented a report about this uh, we have many challenges as a country in terms of violence against women, and all plans have been developed in order to progress towards inclusive public policies that can group and protect all women, girls, and adolescents, including the creation of a cabinet that is specialized to deal with children and adolescents. Those efforts, when we talk about uh, women, violence against women, we have made a progress. And there is no difference when there is a woman in a situation of vulnerability. We don't make a difference between the fact of uh, whether they are a, a person from a Dominican Republic, a Haitian, or a migrant. The ambas person has expressed through different uh, researches that they should guarantee attention provided to Dominican women or women of Haitian descent in the education services of or medical attention. And the Amos person has visited different health centers and they have registered the fact that there is no uh, differentiated attention. In, they're just uh, patients seeking medical attention. I will give the floor to Mrs. Zarina, who is part of the electoral board. Good morning, members of the commission, Mr. Ambassador. One of the issues 
mentioned by the petitioners today makes reference to the state the statelessness in dominican republic there is no statelessness article 55 says any person all persons have and en are entitled to be registered in the registry book to obtain public documentations to give account or of their identity in accordance with law 285 regarding migration in our country all children born are registered the parents can be dominicans or legal foreign residents or they are the uh, sons of daughters of a, a dominican father and a migrant mother they are registered uh, I think you, I'm sorry, but we have run out of time. And as I have interrupted the civil society, I need to interrupt you. And once again, I would like to say that if we are not able to conclude today, that, that does not mean that we will not uh, keep on working. First of all, I deeply appreciate the comments made by the state. The commission, Ambassador Fiallo, appreciates the presence, your presence in this hearing. We do not have ambassadors present all the time, and that shows the cooperation of the state. The fact that there are structural issues does not mean that we do not appreciate the state's response. That is part of our reports. I mentioned that at the beginning, and I want to acknowledge that publicly to you and to all the state representatives. In that vein, I would like to discuss the possibility of establishing a work team so that the, con the commission can contribute uh, to the situation in order to analyze the possibilities and from the inter-american standard and also with uh, the national institutions we can think about how we can contribute regarding standards and shared experiences and that could include a visit it may be virtual or uh, it can be an in-local visit. The Commission wants to listen, know, and contribute. So I would like to ask for that option. Secondly, I would like to address the civil society. And I also want to thank you for being here, for being so clear, and by being here, you are showing your faith on the inter-American system. And that gives us a big responsibility that we should not, um, we should respect that trust. We will continue talking. And I would like to tell to Paulina Solana, I don't see her right now. I will never forget your name. And I want to thank you, Paulina, for being here for telling your story because you represent many other girls. And as a lawyer, as a commissioner, as a rapporteur for women's rights, I know that this struggle is very hard. And you're raising your voice for other women, for your mother, for your community. And we appreciate that. I will never forget your name. And in order to conclude in this hearing, I would like to the team, my colleagues, the rapporteur, and I would like to remind a poem by Marcos Marto, who is a Peruvian poet that is called Homeland. This is not your country because you know the language or the name of the deceased. This is your country because if we could do so, you would choose it again in order to fulfill here all your dreams. Nationality, dignity has to do with that. Dreams, 
believing in the standards and we fight every day to implement them. So thank you on behalf of the commission to keep on working for the respect of human dignity. Thank you to all of you. I adjourn the hearing. Thank you, goodbye.